Hello everyone, my name is Ken Long and I'd like to tell you a story. Uh, this is a story about learning. The things that I've learned as a teacher from the great officers and soldiers that I'm privileged to learn from that you see in front of you. I'm an instructor of strategy and tactics at the U.S. Army's Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Now out here in the middle of Kansas, we've spared no expense to build the finest educational facility in the nation. We've got world-class digital technology in every classroom so we can conduct teleconferences around the world simultaneously. No expense has been spared. And our mission is to prepare the 2,000 officers that come through our doors every year for uncertainty and complexity. When they graduate, they're going back into the world and they're responsible for building nations, supporting the peace, defeating terrorist networks, and doing whatever their national command authority calls upon them to do. And they're brilliant at it. And so to accomplish that mission, we've put together our finest minds in the faculty, and we've carefully designed curriculum, and we researched resources, and we've prepared instructors, and we've rehearsed their lessons, and we've delivered what we thought was high-quality education to these officers. And because we care about how we did, we survey them after every class. And we discovered that we have a problem, a big problem. The longer we go through the academic year, the more dissatisfied the students are. Now we thought at first that this was because they were tired, because we ask them to work pretty hard and, and there's a lot of things going on. So we thought they were just tired. But we thought we'd ask them. And what they told us was something completely different and it caught us by surprise. They said that we don't listen to them, that we're teaching at them, and that we're teaching the wrong things. And they say that the more we teach, the worse it gets. And finally, we're asking the wrong questions. After every class, we're asking them the wrong questions about how it went. And this was troubling. Because we recognized that before these officers were students in our, in our classes, that they were leaders in the world. And outstanding leaders they are. On average, they're 33 years old. They have between 10 and 12 years of service. Three quarters of them have had three years in combat in the last five. And as soon as they're done with our school, as soon as they graduate, they're going right back into it, right back into the complexity that they came from, that we were supposed to be preparing them for, but which apparently we've been doing a pretty poor job of. Now, we were at least smart enough to ask them how to improve, and this is what they told us. They said that we should be asking five questions after every class. What was the best thing and the worst thing about that lesson? What was the biggest surprise for them? What was the best resource and takeaway? And what are their unanswered questions? And what they expect us to do with that information is to learn from it, to adapt how we teach, to how we design the lessons, to how we deliver them, to the resources that we put forward. And with the questions, they want follow-up. They want us to research some answers and put together continuous learning packages so that the learning doesn't stop at the end of the class, but it continues from day to day. They want to engage with this material because they know it's important, and we know it's important, but our own intelligence is getting in the way, it seems. But we're slowly learning how to do better. By engaging in a critical dialogue with these guys, we're improving our practice. Because if anybody in the world could be said to be an expert in managing uncertainty, it's these great officers. And this is what they tell us about the networks that they experience in the world. They know that networks adapt. And they know that any one node is important only in terms of who it connects to and the quality of those connections and the quality of knowledge that it brings into the network. We know that networks are dynamic that they morph, that they're so complex that we can't fully understand them, we can only appreciate them. We know that they change through time and that the states are unpredictable. We know that networks can't be understood, really, but they can be appreciated. And we know that human networks in particular can be supported, but not really controlled. And so, mindful of, the, of these insights from our great officers, 
Uh, we have undertaken a project to redesign our curriculum and our delivery of curriculum and essentially revolutionize our teaching from the inside. And we start with the end in mind, the values that we hope to model inside the classroom. We think that if we're preparing them for complexity and adaptation, that our education and curriculum ought to at least reflect those qualities. And we know it's a long journey and that there's miles to go before we sleep. But we're mindful that if we use patience and harmony and appreciation and discovery, if we make haste slowly, then perhaps we can start approaching that satisfying end state where we're preparing them in a way that's meaningful to them, that resonates with their experience, and that they can use and apply in the real world. Now, we know that we can't predict success because of the complexity of networks. Predictions are hard, especially about the future. But we know that to be prepared to adapt, you have to prepare. You have to master those tools and pack your bags appropriately. Practice that swing, understand your environment, and keep score. We respect data and we respect results. And it's important to be measuring the right things. And we have to remember to relax, breathe deeply, enjoy the game, and when we're done at the end of the day, leave it on the course, learn from it, and get ready to take on the challenge the next day. We're beginning to understand just how deep complexity goes and that there are no easy answers, only good questions and a spirit of inquiry that informs our actions. We're trying to learn our way towards success cooperatively, the faculty and the students together. An important insight for us is the importance of telling and that telling is learning. And so we need to encourage voice inside our classrooms, find more ways to express ourselves, to underwrite the risk of others when they tell us their stories, to appreciate different points of view, to provide both formal and informal means of communication, oral and written, inside the classroom and outside, and create the environmental conditions that encourages the speaking up and the telling of stories. Now we know that cultures are slow to change and the military culture is a powerful one. But the other thing we know is that cultures are always changing, perhaps so slowly that we don't notice them, but they're changing by the accumulated small actions of mindful people throughout the network, that culture is slowly changing. And over time, it's moving in the right direction. We're learning to respect all four ways of knowing. The knowledge that comes from direct experience and, re and the reflection of that experience the propositional knowledge of academic theory and mental models, the practical knowledge that comes from achieving results in real-world situations with real people, and the presentational knowledge that comes from dialogue in the classroom, in the exchange of ideas, and in the telling of stories. And as we look to the future, we can see the changes in the culture everywhere. We see student satisfaction increasing with the adaptations that we've made. We've seen faculty changing their practice and being satisfied with with what's going on in the classroom. We see curriculum designers building in flexibility and choices. We see leaders, senior leaders, opening their eyes and ears, being supportive of our experiments and encouraging that. We see units across the Army learning as they go, connecting with us in partnership to take the best of the classroom into the field and in turn sharing with us their insights from the moment so that we are relevant to each other. We see these changes spreading across the Army in the form of social networking and social software and blogs and wikis where we do collaborative information and collaborative knowledge generation, the telling of stories in all, in all modes and means. And that's why we're excited to be part of the Futures of Education project because we think adaptation and, and revolutionary changes in education are not limited to just K through 12. Everyone has a story, and we know that telling is risky, especially for adults with so much to lose. But we know that because telling is learning, we've got to encourage voices, and we've got to listen to those voices and support them when they speak out and pay attention to the stories that they tell. And that's why it's a privilege for me to be able to share our little story with you and invite you to engage if you're interested with me. My name's Ken Long, and this is my contact information, and I'd be happy to work with you in any way that you can see uh, would be of value. So thanks so much for your attention, and, and enjoy your conference.